constitutional issues uh, that we've just heard debated in the House of Lords. It was totally unprecedented yesterday that the Parliament, the Legislature, took power from the Executive and passed a law that the Executive did not want. That's not how the process works, and Michael Howard says, therefore, it is unconstitutional. That's an absolute load of rubbish. All the time, Parliament passes parts of acts and from time to time private members' bills that are against the wishes of the government. All the more so where the government now doesn't have any sort of majority in the House of Commons. So to say that makes this legitimate is rubbish. I thought Michael Howard's point was the, illegitim the executive has to determine whether we leave the European Union and how, and that it was illegitimate of the legislature to start taking decisions about how and when we leave. Again, that was complete rubbish on his part, because ultimately it's for Parliament to hold the executive to account, particularly on issues as important as Brexit. And if they will, if they, the executive, will not listen to what Parliament is saying by motion and in debates, then the only way you can ensure that Parliament is listened to is by an Act of Parliament. And there was an undercurrent, and I didn't hear the whole quote from Michael Howard, but there appeared to be an undercurrent of saying it would be fair to ignore the bill. I don't know if that's right, but if that is what's being said, it's an absolute disgrace that Tories are saying that, but particularly an ex-Tory leader. He put yes, that, would that present a constitutional crisis? Of course. If, if it wasn't given a royal assent? Where, where no, would well, that end up? How would world... that end up? Would it end up in the courts? It would do, but I don't think that is really being considered. But I mean, a court case would, uh, you'd have to expedite that because of course, but the time court's is running out. The courts would expedite it. For example, today, the Lord Chief Justice, the Master of the Royal, the President of the Queen's Bench Division, heard Gina Miller's um, complaint about the prorogation and they're going to give judgment tomorrow. Mm -hmm. On the 17th of September, the Supreme Court have indicated they're going to sit to hear all of those prorogation cases. Mm -hmm. The courts will move fast. Now, I'm making a more significant point. The, the rule of law means we've all got to obey the law. The Prime Minister is not above the law. Mm -hmm. If the Prime Minister says, I'm just going to ignore a law, why should any of the rest of us obey the law? This is all about stopping no deal. It is. If you're so confident that Boris Johnson's got it wrong and that people don't want to leave the European Union on October the 31st, why don't you just put it to the people and let them decide? Because how can you trust Boris Johnson when he's playing so fast? But he's given a guarantee today that he would hold that election on October 15th, and you know full well that he could put that in legislation. It could be cast iron that it's on the 15th of October. He's got to pass that legislation, and surely if the country wants to be safe against crashing out with no deal, the right course is to legislate for that and to make sure it happens. Mm. Because what do you say about a man who is the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister who appears from his office to be saying he's above the law? Yeah, but both sides would argue that right now we have a democratic deficit. Everybody wants to say on Brexit, here is an opportunity. You have been calling for an election repeatedly mm -hmm. for the last two years. Whoever was returned on the 15th of October would have a right to go to the European Council, perhaps with a majority, and do whatever they want, but it should be the people that decide. The people should decide, but we believe very, very You're strong... saying we would, we, would, we would have another extension and take it past October 31st. That might not be what the... It may be, but it might not be what the British people want. You may be right about that, but what we are suggesting is not irretrievable. We will eventually, if that's what the British people want, leave the European Union. If a man, the Prime Minister, believes himself to be above the law and takes us out of the European Union, there's no going back on that. OK, so if you have, when we come to the election, I'm sure you'll have a debate at the Labour Party conference about what will be in well, the manifesto. Well, we'll Labour Party conference, because if there's a well, general election, there may be one. Maybe not, but there's a lot to sort out, isn't there? Yeah. I'm told, I've had Labour people here repeatedly over the last few days telling me that there will be a referendum. So what's on the referendum? Is it a Brexit agreement that has been turned down three, possibly four times, by the House of Commons and Remain? And are you campaigning for Remain? Well, there will only be a referendum if Labour win power. I personally don't support a referendum, but Labour's policy is to negotiate a deal with the European Union and then let the public decide. So the policy is that you will go to Brussels, negotiate a new deal, even though you want to remain? Well, it's exactly what Harold Wilson did in 1974 and 1975. He basically negotiated a deal and then said... Well, why would they deal with you if you so know that they're going to remain? So, well, the country... <laughs> well, it's a question for the country to decide, not for the Labour Party to decide. So you need to know... But it what wouldn't be the, the best deal, would it? You'd need to know what the alternative was. This is the best deal that could be negotiated. The government would say, now, do you want this deal or to remain? Interesting. Lord Falconer, thank you for your company. Thank you very much.